So as Sarah just said, my name's Adam Carpenter, and I head the developer business growth team at Google Play. As mobile developers, one of the most powerful resources we have available to us is our data. With data, we can understand what's happening right now, and we can also look back and try to identify why that's occurred. Our data lets us identify problems in the game, find solutions, and ultimately grow our businesses. Now, in terms of this presentation, I'm going to talk through some patterns, some trends, and some insights that we've been able to identify with the data at Google Play in each of these three areas. Additionally, I'm going to share a number of key benchmarks across them that you can take back to your teams, compare to the data from your own data warehouse, and identify whether there are problems in your games that you can maybe try and solve. Now, to start off, the first thing I'm going to focus on retention. And for me, like, when you think about installs retention, three of those key KPIs for installs performance is like, the retention number itself, the, the buyer conversion from your install cohorts, and the average revenue per install. But in my mind, retention is kind of the most fundamental metric for us, because if you can't retain your players, you can't make any money. If you can retain them, you can always figure out how to make money off of them. And one other note I want to make for this presentation, for the purposes of the numbers in this section, I'm going to call day one retention as the day of the user's first session start, and day two is the next day. I know a great many of you tend to use retention as kind of base zero. So if you're kind of used to thinking of that nomenclature, just subtract one from each date. To give you some benchmarks and an understanding of kind of what retention looks like, day two retention looks like across the top couple hundred apps on play, 38%, that's the median value. And that's kind of a good target to shoot for and think about it. But if you really want to strive for excellence, if you really want to be in the top decile, shoot for a day two retention of about 52%. Another way to think of this, though, is that our day two retention tends to range between 22% and 52%. But if we flip it around, it actually means that 48% to 78% of the users who install and play our games for the very first time today won't be back tomorrow. They just won't come back. It's really kind of a staggering number when you think about how much time and effort we devote to creating our games, how much money we spend on acquisition. And one of those questions that I had when I was working on the developer side is how can I improve my retention? Is it good enough? What I'm hoping to do here is kind of show you some signals that occur in the very first day that can help you understand whether your retention is good. And if it's not, maybe some things to check for to potentially improve it. So when I was on the developer side, and we were looking at installs performance and the retention on the first day, generally speaking, what we would look at is the level that users got to or the tutorial checkpoint that they reached. However, those tend to be game-specific metrics. And they're not really useful core comparing across games, because people level wildly, uh, wildly different rates depending on what the game is. Tutorial checkpoints all vary. But a metric that we've been able to develop at Google Play, which is much more of an apples to apples comparison, looks at the amount of time that users spend on their first day and compares it to the day two retention rates. So to give you an idea what this kind of looks like broadly across the ecosystem, and this is for kind of the top 200 IAP games, you end up with a curve that looks like this. Starts off at, let's say, maybe 18-ish percent and steadily trends upwards with each successive minute played. And of course, this kind of makes sense. There's a reasonable assumption that the more people play on the first day, the more likely they are to return. Since the more they play, the more likely they are to be having fun. Where this data gets a bit interesting is when we actually take those top couple hundred games and break them out into quartiles. And so what we're looking at here is the top couple hundred games broken out based on their day two retention. What we can actually see is that, by and large, each of these quartiles exhibits largely the same pattern after the first 10 minutes. They all curve upwards and to the right with a steadily decreasing slope. But it's in the first 10 minutes where the most interesting stuff starts to emerge. Zooming into that, we can kind of see here that there's kind of very different shapes and experiences and patterns that emerge just within that first 10-minute window. The top quartile, the, the, green, the green line here, they start out strong and just steadily increase. But the blue line, the second quartile down, you actually see this short 90-second window where retention's largely flat, and only then does it begin to pick up. And that pattern actually increases once you get down to the third quartile. This particular line here, looking at the, yeah, a quarter of those top games, that shows retention's largely flat for the fourth minute. But in a number of games I've looked at, you can actually see that flat period extend out all the way to 10 minutes. 
And then once we get into the bottom quartile, the worst performers, you'll actually, you can actually see retention decline across the first few minutes and only then begin to rise. So to kind of give you some context and understand just how impactful this first five or 10 minutes is, what I want to look at is the performance of the top quartile, the green line, the best performers, versus the fourth quartile, the red line here. And what this graph shows is the amount of time played on the first day on the x-axis and the cumulative percent of lost players on the y-axis. So looking at that fourth quartile, they actually lose 46% of their new installs by the fifth minute, and they lose 58% of their installs by minute 10. Basically, that fourth quartile, and these are all like really strongly performing games, half of their players don't even last 10 minutes in the game. In contrast, the top quartile, the best performers, they see only 17% of their users lost at minute five, and only 24% of their users lost at minute 10. Now think of this from your own game and your own perspective. What could you do if you were in the bottom quartile to move your retention up and effectively be able to retain over twice as many users on day two and all of the following retention days? How much would that help your DAO? And how much would that improve your revenue? Two of the anti-patterns that we've been able to identify in Google Play's data are what I've kind of started dubbing the flats. What we see here is largely flat retention that persists for the first five to 10 minutes, and only then does it begin to rise. And the other one that we've identified, kind of calling it the gorge. Here is where we actually see retention falling for the first couple minutes, and only then beginning to rise. So these are two kind of patterns that are worth checking for in your own game data. Get your data teams, get your data scientists, get your B business analysts to actually pull this and see what your game's looking like. And if you do find that this is occurring in your game, here's some things to think about, because all of these have adverse impact on that first five to 10 minute experience. Large secondary downloads, especially if users aren't on a strong Wi-Fi connection, are going to cause them to bounce out of your game. Likewise, if your tutorials aren't fun, if they aren't representative of what the game really is, that can alienate players. And additionally, slow, slow loading times are important to consider because your new users are not yet invested in their game. So if you experience a lot of slow loading screens, they're more likely to quit out, quit out and go to a game that uh, loads in near real time. And finally, I would say, think about your lobby experience. If a user coming out of the tutorial doesn't know how to get back into the action, how to start building their base, or how to have fun, they're probably going to get confused, and they're probably going to leave. Moving on to engagement, if you think about kind of what most of us wanted, and certainly wanted this when I was working on the developer side, is we always want more users. Since the more users we have gives us greater ability to monetize during our supply side sales and our demand side events, it also allows us, if we're uh, showing ads in the game, to show ads to a significantly great number of users. And in addition to increasing our DAO, we also want to maximize our DAO mount ratio. Since the higher that is, it means that fewer users are churning out of the game and that they're coming back every single day. In an ideal world, our DAO would be equal to our MAO, meaning that nobody would ever churn out of the game. They'd come back every single day. But we know that this isn't the case. Players, veteran players churn out of the game. New installs churn out because of poor retention. Even our kind of frequent users don't come back each and every day due to a lack of strong return mechanics. And so there's two kind of common stickiness metrics that a lot of developers look at. And these are like the DAO wow ratio and the DAO mao ratio. And Kind of to give you some ideas about what you should shoot for, 55% for a DAO wow ratio will put you right at the median, so that's kind of a good starting place. And 31% for that DAO mao ratio is kind of, a, again, a good starting place to shoot for. But ideally, you want to be much better than that. And something to consider when you're looking at it and trying to improve these relationships or these ratios is actually the relationship between the two of them. This is a plot that I had never done on the developer side because I didn't really have enough data points. But in leveraging the Google Play data, I was able to create this. And what it ha does is it has the Dow Wow ratio on the x-axis and the Dow Mao ratio on the y-axis. And what we can actually see is this very strong linear relationship between the two. And what this helps us to understand is that if we want to increase our monthly active users and our monthly uniques, we can actually start not by testing changes that function over an entire month, but test changes that work in seven-day intervals. And one of the big advantages to this is we don't have to wait 28 to 30 days before we start getting results back. We can actually see results coming back in seven days. And effectively, within any given window of time, we can run four times as many tests if we're focusing on weekly versus focusing on monthly. But one of the other interesting things that we can do is we can actually pull it all the way in. This is a metric I started to work with at Google Play. It's not something I'd ever use on the developer side. And what it does is 
it looks at the percent of today's DAU who come back tomorrow. And it's just trying to understand, as a loose proxy for churn, how engaged are our users? Now, if we take that plot from before and instead put this Dow return percent on the x-axis and the Dow wow ratio on the y-axis, what we actually see is that, again, it's positive and linear. And what this kind of tells us is that if we want to increase our stickiness factors, the most important thing for us to do is start focusing at the daily rate. It's hugely important, and it's advantageous because if you think about it, weekly versus monthly, you can run four times as many tests. Daily versus monthly, you can run, depending on how you do your month, 28 or 30 times as many tests. And so fundamentally, the most important thing you can do to boost your active users and your engagement is focus on tomorrow. Focus on what is actually going to bring your users back and keep them engaged. Now, it's kind of important to understand and think about how do you know if you're doing well enough, especially kind of this new metric that most of you probably haven't experienced. And so here's kind of some target ratios looking across the entire top couple hundred apps, couple hundred IAP apps that you can take back and compare. And yeah, that 77% number, that's kind of an important one to shoot for. But really shoot for that high side 84%. Try to figure out how do you get your users to come back each and every day. And a few ideas, a few things that are worth considering are your return mechanics, your social systems, and your push notifications. Because all of these have a huge impact. In case of return mechanics, let's really celebrate them. Let's make sure our users are totally aware of them, that the return mechanics are aspirational, that they're rewarding, that users are really strongly incentivized to come back each and every day to receive them. In the case of the social systems, let's really, really leverage them. Because if you think about it, the games that have very strong clan systems, alliances, good chat groups, substantial friends benefits, in those games, effectively, your players do the work for you. If I'm a player and I have friends in the game who are relying on me, it's in my best interest to be there. And likewise, if they're relying on me, I want to be there for them. So think about your social systems and whether you can strengthen the existing ones or add new ones and let your players do the work for you. And finally, on the push notification side, think about how you can personalize them. How can you create personalized push notifications targeted just towards an individual user or a segment of users as opposed to effectively spamming all users at all hours of the day? Think about trying to target push notifications around the normal time of day that a user plays, as that's going to be much more compelling and much more impactful. Now, the last thing I want to kind of focus on monetization. And this is what I'm going to be talking about. It's a metric that I use really successfully and really effectively when I was working on the developer side. And what it, does, what it will do is it's going to help us understand and answer the question of are our payers healthy? Generically speaking, the industry has kind of referenced singular data points, made claims to the effect of only 2% of payers actually pay. However, that's kind of horribly misleading as a statement, because that's, generally speaking, that's going to be focused more on that daily buyer conversion number. It takes, no, it takes into account, or it doesn't take into account, the percentage of users who are willing to only open their wallets on a weekly, monthly, or even quarterly basis. And so what you can kind of do to take a look at, to understand your payer's health, is a ratio that we call POWDOW. And what it is, is the percent of your daily active users, the users who are active today, that have pay paid within the preceding X day period. In terms of the time frames that I used to like to look at, the ones I found that were most impactful were the 7, 30, 90, and one-year time frames. And these are extremely valuable because they allowed me to do things like compare the users who purchase within a week versus a month, or the quarter versus a year. And the other thing that's really important and really impactful with Powdow, since it's a measurement of the users who have already paid in your game, it kind of helps you to understand the audience in your game that's willing to pay. Because we're always trying to convert first-time users, but then once they've converted, we need to create incentives to actually get them to continue to open their wallet again on a regular basis. So what I'm going to talk through here is an example game and kind of show you some trends and some patterns in the daily buyer conversion and how they've impacted various POWDOW ratios. There's three events that I want to call out on this chart. And the first is this medium duration event that occurred basically at the end of January to the beginning of February, maybe to two and a half, three week period. And what we saw here is that this event provided a substantial increase to the daily buyer conversion. The other two events are event B and C. Each of these occurred for about a day. They were sales, and they created a su substantial 130% increase in that daily buyer conversion. Both are, all three of these are really, really effective, but it's interesting to see what they did with the POWDOW ratios. So looking at the seven day ratio, 
what we can actually see is that event A was extremely effective at monetizing a very wide number of users. And effectively, this event, it actually caused a lot of non-buyers or occasional buyers to pay and open their wallets during that time, versus events B and C, which got significant increases to buyer conversion on that date, but it didn't do much to incentivize the occasional buyers to open their wallets and pay. So it's something that you can think about as you monitor the performance of the game, of the supply side sales and the demand side events in your game. Try to understand who is actually paying during their periods, those periods. What is, what are the motivating factors? What are the incentives? What is kind of driving those players to open their wallets? And you can also, not just the seven day, but I was mentioning, you have the 30 day that you can look at, you have the 90 day that you can look at, you have the one year or even the lifetime, but just always try to understand when you're running sales and you're running events, what incentives are they creating for players? How are they, are they aspirational? Are they desirable? Are they excellent value for money? But what's kind of that motivation? So in terms of the POW die ratios, I can't give you explicit values that you could take back, but what I can give you is standardized ratios. The reason is that POW die is intimately tied to your daily buyer conversion. And some games will have a daily buyer conversion of half a percent. Some games with sophisticated monetization models, it might be as much as 3%. But what you can do is take your daily buyer conversion, and if you look at your seven-day POW down value, it should be four times higher. The 30-day value should be eight times higher. The 90-day should be 12 times. And if you look at that rolling 365-day window, it should be about 15 times higher than your daily buyer conversion. Another advantage of kind of POW down is the inter-period comparisons within your game. Take a look at what this is, is it's looking at the daily buyer conversion, in this case, a hypothetical 1.5%, and the scaling factors from the previous slide. What we would see here is there's a reasonable expectation that 6% of this game's DAO would have paid somewhere between 31 and 90 days ago, and an incremental 5% of the DAU would have paid somewhere between 91 and 365 days ago. If this was your game, that would be 11% of your DAU. So think about it. how can you actually incentivize these players? How can you shift those effectively quarterly buyers to being monthly? Or how can you reactivate those lapsed buyers? Now, let's say you do kind of start monitoring a pound out type metric, and you are trying to understand if there's opportunities, if there's room for growth. Here's a few things to consider. Let's say your game that does run supply side offers. Figure out whether you can better segment them. Can you put constraints on the amount that people can purchase? Can you segment by average transaction value? And in doing so, limit the amount of assets that users can get so they can't stockpile and hoard and therefore have to purchase more frequently. Also think about it. If you see a large percentage of your users haven't paid an extended amount of time, create lapsed buyer offers for them. And almost like treat them like starter packs. Because the primary goal if somebody hasn't paid between 91 and 365 days ago is to provide them with a compelling value proposition to get them to open their wallet, perceive good value, and be willing to pay again. And then for a lot of the users who are active, Think about whether you can personalize the events that you're providing to them in the game. And do so in a way that causes them to drain assets quicker, and therefore is strongly incentivized to open their wallets and pay. Now, just kind of wrap up real quick and revisit each of these sections. When we're looking at retention, that first five to 10 minute period is absolutely essential. And it has such a critical effect on your day two retention and all the following days. So I strongly suggest going back and generating metrics like that day one minutes played versus day two retention. And See what it looks like in your game. And on the engagement side, think about how you can focus on tomorrow. How can you create really compelling engagement mechanics, return mechanics, social systems that will bring players back into the game, make them want to return each and every day? And finally, on the monetization front, Think about your pound out ratios and how they compare to the daily buyer conversion, and use that to generate insights as to where users are spending, how frequently they're opening their wallet, and the size of your player base who's only paid once in a quarter or haven't paid in up to a year. Thank you very much.